good morning. Uh, welcome to Tambarara. Today we have a special guest. Uh, we have a prominent economist, uh, Eddie Cross. And uh, we're just basically going to discuss uh, the recent policy measures uh, announced by the finance minister. And uh, we're just going to sort of have a few you know, negatives and positives and a few discussions on what's going to happen going forward and our expectations for the future. Um, so, Mr. Cross, I think, first of all, just tell us about your background, what brought you into the world of economics, what made you such a prominent figure, and um, you know, tell us your journey. Well, um, when I left school in 1957, I went farming and I uh, did a diploma in agriculture at Guibi College. And uh, when I finished that, I was deployed to the Gokwe district where I did the resettlement of the Tonga people from the Zambezi Valley. Because we had built Kariba Dam, the basin was flooding. We had to move about 30,000 people in Zimbabwe into drier areas, into higher, higher areas. I did that, and when I'd finished that, <coughs> I decided I had to go to university. So I went to University of Zimbabwe and uh, obtained a degree in economics there, and uh, not really knowing what I wanted to do with it. But immediately after I graduated from university, I joined um, probably the biggest firm in Zimbabwe, which was the AMA, the Agricultural Marketing Authority. I joined them as an economist, and I spent 20 odd years there. Um, in the end, I was, I was chief economist, and then I was general manager of the dairy board and general manager of the Cold Storage Commission. Uh, two very big parastatals. And, and, and so my, my working life was largely in the field of agriculture, either on the farming side or on, or on the marketing side. And, um, but of course, if you're dealing, I mean, the AMA was a very big organization, 25,000 employees, turnover of $3 billion a year. We generated about 40% of Zimbabwe's foreign exchange. It's a big organization. And, um, and of course, we had to break sanctions. So you learn quite a lot in that complex environment. So <laughs> when independence came, I was part of the transition team. <coughs> and I helped train the new cabinet. So I, I, was, I was really playing quite a significant role. At independence night, I was on the platform with, uh, with uh, Mugabe and with uh, the international leaders. I was not right in the front row, I was in the next row. But that shows the kind of role that I was playing at that time. And um, since then, I've, I've, I've played a role in various capacities. Um, I've been in opposition politics for, for many years, for 20 years. And in the, my capacity inside the MDC, I was, I was normally in some kind of role involving economics. I was the first secretary for economic affairs. I was shadow minister of local government and so on. But when I uh, left politics in 2018, because I felt uh, it was time for the next generation, your generation, you've got to step up to the line now. Uh, the first person to call me was the new president. And he asked me to help with some of the problems. So since 2018, I've been in an advisory capacity, informal advisory capacity, to, to the president, the minister of, of, of finance, minister of trade. And, um, and it's been fascinating. It's been, it's been a roller coaster rider. I won't say I, I, I've been able to really help very much, but uh, I have had some influence. As to why I'm so well known, I've got a big mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm too outspoken. And we love to listen. That's Thank the you. most important thing. Yeah. <laughs> but my heart is with the people. Um, let nobody, if you do something that's not against the people, I'm, I'm, your, I'm your worst enemy. And uh, also I'm Zimbabwean. I'm a Zimbabwean nationalist. Yeah. Yeah. Always have been. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Uh, a brilliant summary. And an amazing man who's come through a great journey. Um, so I think let's go deep into uh, the policy measures. So I think let's first start off with the increase in interest rates uh, from 80% to 200% um, at the policy mm -hmm. level. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, first of all, what, what's wrong? What are they trying to address? Um, and the president started this dialogue about a month ago with his statement on Saturday, 
where he made those dramatic statements about freezing bank lending and things like that. And this is really the next step, because after he had made those announcements, a number of supplementary measures were adopted. And then you had the, the, the Minister of Finance making this major statement, preceded by the Monetary Policy Committee. So it's those three statements that we have to deal with. They all are trying to address the same issue, which is the rapid deterioration or devaluation in the parallel market rate for the Zimbabwe dollar. When the Zimbabwe dollar was adopted in 2019, it was at one to one. Then in Tuli separated the two, we went to 2.5 to one, then 12 to one, and then, and the problem with that, that, that the we, he created a local currency in 2019. That local currency since then has devalued by about 99%. Today it's virtually worthless. It's, yesterday it was trading at 720 to one. So the government has, and that is the main driver of, of, of inflation. There is a secondary driver in the, in the sense that the, the, the Reserve Bank has been creating money, has been printing money. In the Gono area, we printed cash notes. You remember the trillion dollar notes? Yeah, yeah. I don't know how any Reserve Bank governor anywhere in the world can do those kind of things and still claim to be sane. Because, you know, we were the laughing stock of the world. You know, to buy a loaf of bread, you needed a trillion dollars. Since the transition in 2018 to the new government, what the Reserve Bank has been doing has been printing money electronically on those things. And uh, that's very easy. All the Reserve Bank has to do is add zeros. Add zeros. Yeah. Well, no, just put yeah. numbers in, in, in an account. <laughs> yeah. So when they're buying gold, they print money. When they're buying foreign exchange to settle the auction, they're buying money. When they're paying the contractors for the roadworks they're doing, Bud Bridge to Harare, they print money. So printing money has become a secondary, but the primary the primary reason is this runaway in, in runaway rate of devaluation on the on the PMR. So all of their measures have been has been targeting that. And that, that includes the increase in the interest rates. In, in increasing the interest rates, the, the Monetary Policy Committee was behaving in a classical way. That's, that's how the United States is fighting inflation. That's how Britain is fighting inflation. That's how the European Union is today. And uh, the same, same in Japan. And uh, so all the major economies where they've got rapidly rising inflation, but insignificant compared to us. Yeah. Um, they are using interest rates to curb inflation. And in those kind of countries, it tends to work. Yeah. Sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't think that the increase in interest rates, all it does, increase the cost of business. Mm -hmm. And I don't really think it's going to affect the, the inflation rate at all. Yeah. I yeah. don't think there'll be any, any reduction in the rate of depreciation in the Zimbabwe dollar. Yeah. That's the primary. That's the primary driver. And I, and I fully agree because as a business, I would simply pass on those interest costs to, to the, the end people. consumer. To the consumer. Yeah, we're already suffering from inflationary price rises. Yeah. I'm just going to add add more to yeah. it with the inter, increase right. in interest costs. Yeah. And we've had an increase in broad money supply as well in March and April. So you're yeah. increasing yeah. interest rates, but the money supply is going up in double digit figures, uh, month on month. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So if you put a, those things together. What they're doing is, is futile, actually. Yeah. Um, they're, they're trying to stop the, the tide coming in. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I, and I've said it, I, I, I said to the, the, the Minister of Finance, said to me after adopting, after announcing the SEP, and he said, I hope that these measures will curb the devaluation, the PMI, slow down in, inflation. I said to him, Minister, I think you better start rethinking yeah. immediately because it's not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Precisely. I mean, the PMR rate has not even slowed down. Mm. It's continuing to run. And I'm sure that within two months, our inflation rate will be 50% per month, which is hyperinflation. We're back in 2008. Not quite as serious, yeah. but, but very serious nevertheless. Price is changing every day. Thank you for that. And I've also noticed these measures are a big um, way of trying to liquidate Nostra accounts. 
yeah. uh, especially with that uh, 25% liquidation of uh, unutilized export receipts. How do you think exporters are going to respond? Will it work? We're the only country in Africa which allows exporters to retain foreign exchange yeah. in their accounts. Yeah. Yeah. We're the only country in Africa. Yedwa. No SADC state allows that. If you go to Zambia, if I pay for my hotel room with, with my US card from Zimbabwe, that hotel is not credited in US, it's credited in Kwacha. Same in South Africa, same in Botswana, same in Mozambique, same in Malawi. Yeah. So we have to ask ourselves, is that realistic? And, and my argument is that it's not. Yeah. Um, Zambia at the moment, their foreign exchange earnings are running at between 13 and 14 million US dollars a day. Zimbabwe is three times that. Three times that. Our foreign exchange earnings today are about 35, 30, 32, 35 million dollars a day. A day. And if we were to trade that foreign exchange the same as all our neighbors traded it on the interbank market, in fact, our currency would be extremely strong. There's no reason why our economy you know, can't be the strongest in the region mm -hmm. instead of the weakest. Mm -hmm. And this, this business of retaining foreign exchange, as if somehow foreign exchange, you know, it comes from our history, where we've always had exchange control. It's been difficult to get foreign exchange. Today, we have a balance of payment surplus. Mm -hmm. So technically, we don't need foreign exchange, exchange control anymore. Yeah, yeah. But the problem is, in the system, there are people who make money out of this devaluation and people who make money out of exchange control. I mean, in, 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 in the Gono era, if I was to give you foreign exchange at the official exchange rate, you would be instantly a millionaire because you could, you could buy anything you wanted. Yeah. I, think, I, think, I, I think a twin cab, a brand new twin cab, Toyota, was the price of a pack of cigarettes. Yeah. If you got access to foreign exchange at the official exchange rate, which is controlled by the Reserve Bank. So, you know, gone or behaved like Father Christmas. Yeah. You know, yeah. he, was, he was handing vehicles out to people. people yeah. You know, yeah. it, it was just ludicrous. Yeah. But, and, and the problem is that, 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 is, that, first of all, that establishes him as a very powerful person. So yeah. it gives him political power. Yeah. And, and it is the same today. I mean, you talk in South Africa about state capture. We have state capture here. Yeah. And these shadowy figures, and the government tries to tackle these guys. Yeah. I mean, the president called in the other day, the biggest businessman in the country, and asked him just what was he doing, you know, yeah. because they, they accused him of, of driving the PMR rate. Yeah. He said, Mr. President, we're just trying to stay in business. And, and, and that's the first priority of a businessman, yeah. is not to go bust. Go bust. You know, he owes that obligation to his staff, to yeah. his shareholders, to, to his clients. Right. And, uh, and you can't ask businessmen not to behave in any other way. Yeah. So I, I personally, my personal view is very radical. Yeah. I think we need to adopt the Zimbabwe dollar as our sole currency right. of exchange. Right. And we need to trade all foreign exchange coming into the country on arrival at the interbank market rate. We need to lift exchange control completely. Yeah. So if you want foreign exchange, you go into your bank and buy it. Right. As you can do in, I mean, in Malawi, you can yeah. walk into your bank at 5,000 5, 5, US dollars. Yeah. Yeah. You want to go on holiday, you just take your car. Malawi. So, but, but how would we then close the gap between the interbank auction and parallel it market rate? It would disappear. Yeah. It'd be one exchange rate. Yeah. The interbank market rate. If the president yeah. was to liberalize the interbank market today, yeah. at the moment it's tightly controlled by the Reserve Bank. Yeah. <clears throat> they, it's limited to $10,000 a week. $10,000 a week for a businessman, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's yeah. a waste of time. Yeah. It's not even worth applying for. And then you've got to have a, a foreign invoice to pay. You've got to go through all the procedures. You've got to be liberalized completely. Foreign currency comes in, the bank trades it. You want foreign exchange, you go in and you buy as much as you like. You want to buy machinery, you want to buy raw materials, you're going to do it. We have enough foreign. 
There are no shortages in this country. And that tells yeah. you we have adequate foreign exchange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, the numbers don't lie. We yeah. have a current account surplus. We are getting a lot of USD in. All we just need to do is expedite the supply of US dollar um, to the auction system. Then you're going to narrow that gap. You don't need yeah. the auction. Yeah. yeah. If the interbank market was working properly, yeah. that, um, in the MPC, that was our first attempt, was okay. to get the banks yeah. to trade the foreign exchange. Yeah. Okay. And they refused. Why? Because they're making too much money. You know, <clears throat> the <clears throat> if a bank operates on the inter on the, on the auction, they get one and a half percent commission. If they're privately trading, they get ten percent. Now, just imagine a commercial bank anywhere in the world getting ten percent commission, five and five, five on the buyer, five on the seller. Anywhere in the world, it, in USD. Yeah. In USD, USD, they love it. And now 60% of their loans are USD anyway. They, yeah. they barely get interest income nowadays. It's all fees and commission. Yeah. That is, that is so, yeah. so I think there's a lot of vested interests. Yeah. And, you know, like all major political decisions, this has to be, this is a decision that has to be made by a national leadership. And it won't be popular. There'll be lots of people who will say, you're crazy. Okay. But it is the only way to fix the problem. And, and, and it is, I mean, the other day, Sudan and Somalia adopted this under guidance from the, from the IMF. What happened? Both Sudan and Somalia have stable exchange rates. Somalia. Somalia. <laughs> Desert, drought, starving people. Yeah. They have a stable exchange rate. You know, they don't have any of this nonsense. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and the problem with this kind of situation is that if you devalue the local currency, in effect, it's a tax on every Zimbabwe. It's a tax. Okay, so it's, it's, not, it's not the wealthy who are suffering. Go, go to any fancy restaurant. Look at the cars. Look at the traffic. It's not the people with money that are suffering. They're doing very well. It's the, it's the civil service, it's guys in paid employment who are on relatively fixed salaries, and it's the, it's the ordinary people, the poor. Yeah. Those are the guys who are suffering. The trade of inequality. Our Gini coefficient must be astronomic at the moment. Yeah, yeah. You know, you have guys building these multi... You've seen the houses mm. in, 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 in Arari. Yeah, yeah. I mean... It's crazy. It's yeah. like Hollywood. Yeah. It is, it yeah. is. And we are, we are, we're a, a poor country. Yeah, yeah. We're not right at the bottom, but we are, we're not middle income. Yeah, middle income. Yeah. You know, our yeah. income is less than, I think it's, it's less than a thousand dollars a year. Per yeah. I think we, we dropped in the human um, development standings as well. Absolutely. Because yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that's absolutely an indicator of absolute poverty. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the only way to solve that is in fact to fix this problem. This is the elephant in the room. I said to him, Tuli, in the beginning of 22, this is the only issue on the table. This is the, if you don't solve this, by the end of the year, you'll be in big trouble. And, and I, I've told the president that. Yeah, yeah. You know, 23 is looming. You won't yeah. win 23 with this. <laughs> yeah. You've yeah. got to win 23 with this and this. And so you've got to start doing things that favor the people. Mm -hmm. And there's no other issue more important than this at the moment. None. This so, is it. So currency stability is our biggest, obviously the biggest elephant in the room. And, and also growth. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, the economy yeah. is growing, yeah. despite all these problems. Yeah. But if you speak to businessmen today, they say the pressures today are massive. Yeah. Yeah. And we're repeating the problems of 2008. You know, when our local economy simply collapsed, we were producing nothing. We were importing 70% of our food. Because it's no good us, you know, repeating certain cycles. Uh, we go through hyperinflation, we dollarize. Hyperinflate again once there's a cash shortage. And, and we're dollarizing again. Yeah, we can't keep making the same mistake. Hmm. So now uh, they've brought in a new, something that we haven't seen before, uh, gold coins in Zimbabwe. Right. Uh, what is your opinion on the gold coins? Will this bring the currency stability that we're looking for? No, no, it has no monetary implications whatsoever. Yeah. You know, this is for people who want to put their money into, into an asset which will hold its value. Yeah. Yeah. They'll sell gold coins. 
But they'll sell gold, if they're selling gold at double its world market price. The beneficiary will be Fidelity Ventures. And, you know, they're going to mint the gold coins. Yeah. They'll be selling gold, like the, like the Kruger Rand in South Africa. Yeah. The Kruger Rand in South Africa, they sell for about $2,800 for 30 grams. Yeah. Um, and it's not pure gold. Yeah. It's yeah. 22 carats. 22 carats. And it'll be the same here. Yeah. It, nice business. Because you buy your gold from the, from the gold producers at eighteen hundred dollars an ounce, then you and then you sell it for double that price to an idiot like you, yeah. <laughs> who simply wants gold. Yeah. And then you, you, the Reserve Bank doesn't give you the gold coin; it gives you a piece of paper. That's exactly how it is. You know, I don't believe physical coins will actually be given. No. They're going to give you certificates of ownership. A certificate of ownership. Then you're going to have another parallel market. Absolutely, ab- yeah. absolutely. You're have another and, parallel uh, market. But also, you know. The Kruger Rand, when you buy it in South Africa, you buy it from a jeweler. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you can then put it in your pocket and walk out. Yeah, walk yeah. out the door. Exactly. And you go overseas. Yeah. So there's a global market for the Kruger Rand. Yeah. That won't happen with this particular one because it's not going to be convertible externally. And it's so not, I, I think very limited application. And no implications from a monetary point of view. So since we we, we see that there's going to be an arbitrage opportunity locally. Will this push the parallel market rate further? Yeah. Because um, if I, I, it's, it'll be yeah. a thousand to one before the end of the year. Yeah. Hmm. No doubt about that at all. Unless yeah. you do something. Yeah. And yeah. you do something effective. Yeah. What they've been doing up to now, in fact, has actually made things worse. Ta- take, for example, this, this, this SI, which yeah. requires the big retailers to price their goods in RTG yeah. dollars. Yeah. Right. So a friend of mine goes to a big retailer. On Saturday, he buys an item, he, he chooses it, takes it off the counter, he looks at the price, he said, he says to the assistant, what's the price in USD? It gives, it, gives him a price, he says, but that's three times what it was last week, okay. or double. So the guy says, sir, are you a regular customer? Yes, I am. Go to the office. He gets, he gets a card, which he signs for, called a loyalty card. He gets a seventy percent, seventy percent reduction in the whole in the, in the U.S. dollar price with a lower T bar. <laughs> they're just trying to avoid. They're yeah. trying to comply with the government regulations, yeah. but they're playing games. And and the, yeah. net, the net effect of that is we we are no better off, yeah. and, and the parallel market continues to run. And we do have U.S. inflation because Un- unbelievably. Yeah. Because as so long as you can price it, first country in the yeah. world, yeah, having US, the US dollar has strengthened, yeah, and we and, and we see the US dollar value in real terms yeah. declining, because of uh, actually actually actually, yeah, uh, this is really a crazy situation. Yeah, it is. It is, and um, uh, the civil servant wage increases by hundred percent. The material, the material. It's going to be another injection of RTGs in the market. It's going to push the parallel markets. 30, yeah. The average civil service gets about 30, 35,000 RTGs dollars a month. Yeah. What's that? $50? Yeah, around 50 dollars 2009, when I was in parliament, as a member of parliament, my salary was 50 US dollars a month. In 2009. I was elected in 2008. And... Uh, when we, when I was sitting in Panama, when Chinamasa announced the dollarization program, my salary at the end of the month was fifty dollars. I was the lowest paid MP in the world. Average, average, average MP in in Kenya gets twelve thousand US dollars a month. I was getting fifty dollars a month. That's what the civil service gets today, in real terms. Double it to seventy thousand, it's worth a hundred dollars. Can you live on a hundred dollars a month? With US in place, no way. No, you can't. And family to feed. So yeah. it's it's yeah. essential. Yeah. It's essential to try and keep pace. But the danger of this of increasing salaries in RTGs is what happens when you liberalize. Yeah. And suddenly the RTGs is worth instead of worth being worth seven hundred, it's worth three hundred yeah. or two fifty or one fifty. You have a big cost issue. You know, then you, you've increased the salaries of all yeah. these people massively because you've increased their buying power. Yeah, yeah. So you, 
You know, we did a lot of stupid things in 2009. For example, we allowed the city of Harare to convert its salaries from the local currency, the Zimbabwe dollar, to U.S. dollars at this exchange rate, which gave the which gave the the, the, the head of the administration, mm. the, the the town clerk, mm. he was getting was it twenty three thousand dollars a month or thirty three thousand mm. dollars a month? That's a that's the, a dube. Dube, yeah, yeah. dube in yeah. in Pismas, yeah, in the public sector. Yeah, he was yeah. getting half a million dollars a month, yeah. Yeah. and and you know we could not change that because it was contractual. So we've got to be very careful what we do right now. Yeah. Um, my, my, my view is that what we should do is we should bite the bullet. We should say we, we, we're not dollarizing. We are going to the Zimbabwe dollar and we're going, to, we're going to liberalize and we're going to do it in 24 hours. And I think that this, it's like February the 17th, 2009, I was sitting in Parliament when Chinamasa, as the Minister of Finance, stood up and said, no exchange control, dollar, multi-currency environment, you can yeah. use whatever currency you want, no controls on gold. Pum, 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 15 minutes. The next day, the next day, 24 hours later, Zimbabwe was a different country. On the 17th of, 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 on the 17th of February 2009, there was no petrol. Anywhere, every filling station was empty. Every supermarket was empty. Yeah. You, if you wanted to buy something, you had to you had to buy bread. You went to went to Francistown or to Lusaka yeah. Yeah. to buy bread. And the following day, the 18th of February, this was a different country. Within within 10 days, fuel was in free supply. Within three weeks, every supermarket in the country was was mm. fully stocked. Yeah. Yeah. This is, you know. It's, yeah. it's, you've just got to, this is a powerful engine, Zimbabwe. Yeah. We have a powerful motor here, yeah. Yeah. but you've got to tune it right. you got to tune it right. That's all you've got to do. And if, yeah. the, if the president would do that, um, I think this would be, this would transform this country immediately. And because I am concerned about the, the, the increased salaries now in RTG, in the RTGs by a policy measure. You can't reduce people's salaries. You can't. And now you'll see more instances of tax evasion. Because yeah. now in real terms, people are earning way more than they were before. Absolutely. Yeah, so your tax revenues are going to be yeah. an imbalance yeah. compared to what you're paying cost wise. That's right. Then the cash shortage mm -hmm. should start again. Well, we've, we've got a real cash shortage at the moment of local yeah. currency. I mean, local dollars are about 3% of the availability of cash. Yeah. Most yeah. of it is electronic. Yeah. It doesn't affect people very much because they just use their cards. Good cash. Echo right. cash. Yeah, yeah. And they need to liberalize all of that. Yeah. These limitations on echo cash should be removed. The IMTT. <laughs> IMTT yeah. is a very, very powerful instrument. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when <clears throat> when the minister introduced that in August twenty eighteen, we were running a forty percent deficit in the mm -hmm. in the budget. Forty forty percent of all our expenditure was borrowed money. And in six weeks, there was no deficit, and it remains that way. It's a, a very efficient tax. Mm -hmm. Do you do you notice a two cent per dollar tax when you do a transaction? Uh, not as an do individual you, in my do, capacity. Do you, know, do you know what Econet yeah. charges? Yeah. Five percent. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. two percent tax is a very small tax, but because it's collected on everybody, and it's on in, and it's on electronic transactions. Yeah which are the majority of transactions today, it raises a lot of money. Yeah. You don't need people. It's, it's collected every day. Yeah. It's transferred to the Treasury at about 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. Um, you know, there's no accounting. You don't yeah. have to be audited by Zinwa, by yeah. Z Zinara. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Zimra. Zimra. <laughs> yeah. And you, you don't have to go through all of that, all that nonsense. I, I'm in favor of, I'm in favor of increasing the intermediate monetary tax, transaction tax. The businesses have complained, especially your of former course, retailers. Of course they complain. Yeah. <laughs> but who pays the majority of that? It's not mm. the former retailers, it's the informal. Mm. You know, the informal sector here is 70% of the part of the economy. Yeah. But they all use, the, they all transact electronically. Yeah. Yeah. This is the only tax that taxes it. 
and it generated 45 billion zim dollars last year yeah so yeah, it has and, been and if we did I, my view is we should go to that yeah. and we should scrap pay mm-hmm. okay we should scrap company tax yes. um, to stop it mm-hmm. you know pay to collect money from you costs us money because mm-hmm. every business has yeah, submit, submit forms and and returns and so on and, then, and, and yeah they got to deduct it from you and then pay it it's yeah. a it's a lot of work yeah just replace it with a with a with a with a with a with a tax on transactions mm. and company tax no audits no quarterly returns you know it would be a nightmare for accountants yeah. because yeah. most accountants make the majority of their money yeah, yeah. and we're already mm. seeing accountants going on strike mm. they can't deal with this hyper inflationary accounting yeah. you know you have listed companies delaying the ni- results it's a nightmare yeah. it's a nightmare yeah, yeah. so That would sort all of that out. But anyway, that's Mangwara. <laughs> yeah. So I think, let, let, let's close off with, I have two final questions. What's your year-end inflation forecast? And um, I know you're a proponent of going back to some dollarization, but the more I look at it, the more I see if we had a graph, we're moving closer and closer to dollarization, especially with these new measures, entrenching the multi-currency regime in law. Mm-hmm. You know, these are things the economy was doing, but now they're sort of accepting that, you know, US dollars here to stay, liquidation of Nostro, you know, trying to solidify the USD assets available and USD money supply. I just see us moving towards that. Um, what is your opinion? We're effectively dollarized today. Yeah. Effectively. Yeah. We're effectively dollarized. The RTGS dollar is a secondary currency, certainly not the currency of transaction. Yeah. Secondly, I think that within within the next... Within the next quarter, the f- third quarter, we'll be hyperinflation, 50%, 50% per month. Okay. So year end, today it's 200%, 500% inflation. Yeah. By the year end, it's perfectly possible. Yeah. And, 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 and it's completely unjustified. It's, it's lunacy. It's yeah. just policy. <laughs> it's self-inflicted wounds. Uh, thank you for having um, for coming with us to this Friday, and uh, we hope to do another show next week. Uh, thank you for joining us. Like, subscribe, and follow us.